Good afternoon, everyone. This coronavirus thing has a lot of people concerned. Some people have actually become terrified of the whole thing. Maybe you're wondering why all of this is happening. In our fellowship, we give a lot of place to line-by-line, verse-by-verse teaching of God's Word. That way we get the whole counsel of God. We spend a lot of time studying Bible prophecy and end times events. Is this a sign of the end times? Well, let's look for a little bit of biblical perspective, shall we? The Bible tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. So today we grieve alongside those who have lost loved ones to this terrible disease. The Bible also tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we seek to comfort those who have been traumatized by fear over the coronavirus, as well as its effect on our day-to-day -day lives. In this information age, we're constantly bombarded by data. There are real-time updates on plagues, natural disasters, instability in our political structures, volatility in our financial markets. Let's take a look at a relevant example, shall we? From 1918 to 1920, the Spanish flu infected an estimated 500 million people, which represented a quarter of the world's population at that time. The death toll in that pandemic is estimated to have been somewhere between 17 million and 100 million people. Of course, there weren't any computers then, no internet, no cell phones. So back then, very few people had an idea what the disease was or just how widespread its impact was. The U.S. Government Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, estimates that be somewhere between 32 and 49 million Americans contracted influenza this past year. 20,000 to 50,000 of those people died. These statistics are comparable with a fairly typical flu season and well below the 2017-2018 estimate of nearly 49 million illnesses, 959,000 hospitalizations, and 79,400 deaths. This is why the coronavirus is so scary to many people. It makes us look at our own mortality. If you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you have no reason to fear death. Having said that, we shouldn't be looking to accelerate that eventuality. There's lots of good advice out there, precautions we can follow to reduce our risk of exposure. Of course, we should be wise and follow these precautions. Jesus often likened the end times to birth pangs, and those of you who have given birth know that as the baby's birth approaches, labor pains become more intense and they become closer and closer together. In the same way, God is going to allow an escalation of uh, all kinds of trials as we approach His return. His goal is to bring people to Jesus Christ, to surrender to Him, to find salvation and the hope that He alone offers. And there's no reason for these things to take us by surprise. Jesus spent a lot of time describing end times events to us. He constantly exhorted us to watch and be ready for His soon return. One such end times passage is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 21. Jesus' disciples asked Him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? And he said, Take heed that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near. Therefore do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. For these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. In that passage, Jesus offers us great encouragement. Don't be deceived or surprised. Don't panic. Be patient. The basis is found a couple of verses later. This will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. My friends, this is our opportunity to bear witness. Jesus is coming, and in my opinion, He's coming very, very soon. How can we find peace, comfort, and protection in the midst of our current pandemic? Well, the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Do you want peace? Turn off the TV. Focus on heaven. 
pray without ceasing. Live with a thankful heart that's submitted to Jesus Christ. Here are three positive and specific things that you can do right now, right from God's Word. First, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land and I will forgive their sin. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If you follow Jesus Christ, get on your knees and pray. If you don't follow Him, what in the world are you waiting for? Second, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. James chapter 1, verse 5. God is the source of true wisdom. He's waiting to give His wisdom to you. All you have to do is ask Him for it. And finally, rest in God's care. Casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. God loves you. He's watching over you. If you're in Christ, nothing can touch you until it first passes through the filter of His love for you. If you're not in Christ, He longs to have fellowship with you. If you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you can do that today. You won't ever regret it, and you'll be amazed at the benefits that you reap from it. Go to www.findpeacewithgod.net today. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.